We are back at Falcon Motor Group. This is the same place that I drove the Lamborghini Urus. And I am in a BMW X5M competition. So that means this is the 617 horsepower car, not the standard 600 horsepower car. We get some additional trims. We got a little bit more aggressive looks. So the wheels are a little bit different. But what I'm more curious to know is can a car like this six-figure X5M compete with an Urus that's twice the cost? That's what I'm curious about. Now, I am not a stranger to this motor. Um, I've driven the M8 competition more than a handful of times. My brother has one. So every time I'm in New York, it's actually the car I, I usually drive and borrow. Um, so I love that car. I love, love, love almost everything about that car. So now kind of driving this big giant behemoth version of an M8, I have this thing about SUVs. Every time I step foot into a big sporty SUV, I never know quite how they're gonna handle. And the Urus was the, one of the biggest shocks to me. And you know what? Oh, wow. Okay, that was, that was at 60. And uh, so this car handles very, very well. It might handle probably every bit as well as the Lamborghini did. We're gonna go around those turns a few more times because I'm pretty impressed right about now. I'm in drive, I'm not in sport. I do have the shift settings set to the highest level. So, I do think this is a really good looking car. I want to throw that out there. I've always been a fan of X5s. Every time I see one, especially in this blue. And it's also very quick. <laughs> it's very quick. 617 horsepower is nothing to sniff at. Uh, especially because it's well within the same power levels of the Lamborghini Urus. Granted, and this thing actually weighs 5,500 pounds. So you've got a car like the M5 or the M8 that weighs about 4,400, 4,500 pounds. Then you've got this that weighs 1,000 pounds more. And yet it still feels like it's very capable of hauling itself at very brisk speeds. Having said that, I know that the zero to 60 times in these cars are in the mid three second range, about three and a half seconds, 3.6. Quarter miles, 11.8 to 11.9. Trap speed, 116, 117. So not slow by any stretch of the imagination. As I had mentioned in the Urus video, about a decade ago, a V10 R8 had similar straight line performance. So we've come a long way with SUVs. X5s are always really capable, performance-oriented SUVs, or SAVs as the BMW PR speak likes to refer to it as. But let's face it, this is an SUV. I'm not really sure what a sport activity vehicle is, but this is it, I guess. So, I love the interior of this car. Now, this is a 2020 model, so this is pre-facelift. And just about a month ago, BMW announced a facelifted version of this car, or as BMW likes to call it, LCI, uh, Life Cycle Impulse. For those not in the know of weird nomenclature of BMWs, um, but yeah, so the new X5s have this giant curve dual screen thing that is really spreading in every BMW. It started with the i4 and now it's kind of making its way through the, the 7 series and etc, etc, etc. So the new X5 gets that. But this interior is still very functional, it's very quick, very responsive touchscreen controls. There are a pair of heated and cooled cup holders. The other day, we saw the Land Rover Defender that had cooled, had a little fridge over here in the center console, but this takes a, is a little bit of, it's a slightly different approach. This has cooled and heated cup holders. All right, let's get this into sport. So we're gonna, we're gonna press the M2 button right here. So now we are in, ooh, 
limited chassis stabilization. Sounds scary. But immediately you feel, oh, wow. You feel the chassis firm up, the steering firms up. And now there are some speed bumps here that they've recently installed. So going over those, that's actually not bad. Not wow. Not bad at all. In sport mode like this, an M2 dynamic mode, that's not bad at all. Now we're gonna turn off M2 dynamic mode. So now we're back in comfort mode. Wow. You know what, going over a giant speed bump feels almost the same in comfort and dynamic mode. So that's kind of interesting. BMW is known for a lot of wizardry and trickery. So I'm not quite sure how they managed to pull this feat off. But let's go back into M2. One thing I will say is that the, the car is not as loud as an Urus, or even not as loud as the Defender that we drove the other day. Clearly there's a bit more of an orientation towards luxury here. And I'm finding myself very relaxed. Here we go. Wow. BMW still knows how to dial in a chassis. Arguably better than anybody out there, better than Mercedes or Audi. It's just what they've been known to do. They don't mind going a little bit further than their competitors just to get that extra bit of edge out of the performance of any of their cars from a 7 series down to a 1 series. So the interior, like I said, I do like it quite a lot. If you're not a fan of touchscreens, you do have redundancy here. You can use the traditional iDrive rotary knob. But I will say this, there is a learning curve. There are a lot of buttons. You do have, again, redundancy for like your AC, for example, you have redundancy there. But there's still a learning curve because there are still some features that are kind of stuck in iDrive. And in order to access them, you basically have to stop the car because it's kind of dangerous to be going through some of the deeper channels in iDrive in order to find a certain feature that you're looking for. This car doesn't seem to have any of these gesture control thingamajiggies, which, thank God, because it's completely useless as I tend to be a little talkative with my hands. I gesture a lot, and so right now the radio or the AC would be doing all sorts of crazy things as I'm recording this video. Now, the semi-autonomous features that BMW has, I've tested them in the M8. I can vouch, they're actually pretty good. Uh, I took the M8 from a trip from New York to Rhode Island, and for a large chunk of that drive, we had the self-driving on. Now, you have to keep your hand on the wheel, which is totally acceptable, I get that, but, um, but it was very, very functional. It was extremely capable. It could switch lanes, it could hold a lane, it could speed up, it could slow down. Basically, I never felt like I was in any kind of peril. Now, I can't say the same about some of these other systems that are out there, in particular, the Range Rover systems didn't feel that good, but nonetheless, um, I, did, I do really feel very confident using the BMW's kind of, uh, let's call them driving assistance, because they are not autonomous modes. They're not meant to be, they're not supposed to be even called that. Backseat space, pretty good. As I have mentioned before, I'm about six feet, six foot one. I have this chair set up to the way I drive it, sat back behind myself, it's totally fine. There's, a, there's plenty of room, totally acceptable. I don't think anybody would complain back there. Uh, trunk space is very good if you are a family of four or five and you've got strollers, you've got some soccer equipment or anything of that nature, it'll haul all of it. On top of that, you can still make a grocery run and add to that as well. So what does this car sound like? It's an M car, it's supposed to sound great. Well, I'd say it's definitely quieter than an M5 or an M8, that's for sure. But it's still good, it's still throaty, it's still got a nice growl to it. It's not quite Defender or, or even SVR. I think, in my opinion, the F-Pace SVR is the best sounding of the super SUVs, if you will. Uh, the Urus is kind of somewhere up there, not quite to that kind of shriek, uh, but Still a good sounding car, nothing too thrilling. 
but again it is a twin turbo v8 so there's going to be some muffling going on with this turbos kind of acting as uh, as mufflers essentially but obviously once the puta sangue comes out that will be the be all and end all of crazy sounding super suvs because it's a naturally aspirated v12 so as long as they can keep producing a pure sangue with a v12 because eventually and inevitably there will be a v8 a twin turbo v8 that'll go in there and that'll be a very sad day but for now we've got what we've got man i like this car a lot i like this car we've got a turn we've got a turn let's go let's take this turn If you aren't looking to splurge on something like a Lamborghini Urus, but you still want a very high performance SUV capable of hauling around your whole family, and if Audis are not really your thing, because the RSQ7 does exist, and maybe Mercedes is not your thing, and you're wondering what is an X5M like, well rest assured, I'd say it's probably 90-95% as good as a Lamborghini Urus. I don't think you're going to be finding yourself regretting the decision to save a hundred some odd thousand dollars and going with this German behemoth with 617 horsepower. I think this is a fantastic car. Now having said that, if you like cars like these, if you like BMWs and you like this review, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.